that's what it's all about. Good. Yeah, it's not good morning. Good evening, everybody. Good morning if it's morning for you. We are making a cup of tea to start. Oh, it's been a day. It, it's like one of those days. I'm not, like, I love you guys, but it's one of those days. I love cooking, but it's one of those days that I wish we had our set up in our games area because I would have said like let's play games instead because I went to gym class yesterday and I feel muscles that I've never felt before that were there um, I have been gardening all afternoon and then in the morning it's just been like I am exhausted so we're gonna have to make some good food to perk me up we're gonna start with the tea but before we go in and get the tea let's do next time on. I'm gonna do the iPad because the stream deck one day. Oh, wrong one. There we go. So this is what we made last night. Isn't it pretty? Uh, so these are oh the wrong wrong uh, title exceed. Um, but we did some Brussels sprouts and green beans. We did um, some satay chicken, and then you've also got some uh, berry and white chocolate muffins too. So these are the satay chicken skewers with uh, peanut butter sauce. I was getting ready for stream and I forgot that I made them this like last night. And so I was complaining about being hungry all day and I didn't even look in the fridge. Um, you know, I was too busy like doing all the stuff in the gardening or whatever. I didn't even look. And so now I'm upset that I can't eat the side of chicken. <laughs> ah! Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, but I'm, I'm excited that I get it tomorrow as well, as well as the chicken that we make tonight. Um, and then these are probably my favorite muffins at the moment. So I made them last week and my granddad told me they're amazing, uh, but I made them like last night and I, they weren't as good. So I think it's because I put the Greek yogurt in there. I don't think the Greek, I don't know. They're not like, they didn't go crunchy that were quite moist. So I either put too much oil or the Greek yogurt wasn't good. So we'll have to make it again another day to figure it out. Um, and then the green beans and Brussels sprouts are just something like when you feel like you want some green veggies, but laced with uh, some chili garlic oil and some uh, slithered almonds in there, banging. Just letting you know they were banging. Uh, so I'm excited to eat them tomorrow as well because I didn't remember that I had them. We received a whole bunch of subs, 13 subs last night. So 10 gifted subs um, and three subs and resubs, which was very, very exciting. We had some warheads, we had some fun last night. Uh, and we received the World of Warcraft book yesterday. So this was gifted to us from uh, Jersey. The money was gifted and donated. So then we bought this gift um, Warcraft book and I'm excited to say that from now on, well, until we finish the book, we're going to start doing Warcraft Wednesdays. So we're going to start cooking. I, we, we haven't fully fleshed it out, but I think we're going to make two recipes every Wednesday, like a dessert and like a, a savory or something. At least two recipes from this book each week, which I'm excited, very excited for. So um, I did the food order today and I forgot about it. So we might have to start from the next week. So we'll see, um, but that should be fun. All right, actually bring up that chat. Let's, let me go get some hot water. So we've been laughing in Discord, but Joseph, how you doing? Um, April, Strip, welcome back guys. Uh, who else is in there? Ash, Wolfrunner, of course. Sema, hello. Jersey, at uh, April. Who's that? You can't read that. Joseph, thank you for the follow. Um, is that C? I can't read the blue writing on the black. I disagree, no, no, she doesn't need anyone telling her. Should probably try to contact her. Thank you very much. Welcome everybody. Um, how are you guys going tonight? It is five, 46, so we've been starting a little bit early because Exceed has work um, and like by the time we finished last night and like got claimed, 
Yeah, from Thamesons, yeah. Like, I was like, I think it is, but I don't want to say because I can't read it. But welcome, it's lovely to see you again. Um, yeah, after we finished stream last night, we got into bed uh, about 9, exit 9.30, and the next thing wakes up at 3.45 for work, and starts at 4, so crazy. She's 11 hours ahead of me. Tell me about the future. It's, it's pretty nice, it's pretty nice weather today. It's a bit warm, but. Right. So I'm just straining my tea. You need to put some milk in it, I gotta go all the way up there. So, Molly looks so professional at this view. Oh, thank you. Thank you, that's a nice compliment. Um, so if you're seeing Exceed right in chat, Molly needs her own TV show on the Food Network. You guys are just too sweet. Um, I wouldn't even know what to do on the Food Network. I'd have cool angles. We'd have like cooler things. But one day, one day. Uh, she needs a whole channel make with Molly on, ev on it every 5.30? Every night, you mean? She doesn't need to tell anyone what to do, and Food Network should probably con- Yeah, I reckon. Um, so, how is- Okay, let me just talk about um, Exceed first, just to remind you guys. So, unfortunately, Exceed had- He's, he's made a revolutionary- He's gone leaps and bounds with our music, right? So, there's- It's less lag on the computer, um, he's hotkeyed it, so he's downloaded the music um, that's royalty-free music onto his computer so he can play it off the computer rather than having to stream it off YouTube. Unfortunately, he's had to hotkey it into the keyboard. Um, and so that, out of all of the letters he chose, he chose the letter U. So he, every time he, every time he types the letter U, it pauses or unpauses the music. So... Is this, are you pressing U, Exceed? Um, yeah, I said to him, I was like, out of all the letters you chose a U, I was like, you chose a vowel? And he's like, I can't press this, I can't press that. So now he has to copy and paste U. Um, so if you, you see the, him spelling things incorrectly or in the, the, the American way, a color without a U, that's just a reason why. Uh, yes, the garden, let's go back to the garden. Oh man. So, for those that don't know and haven't checked out our Discord, I bought two garden beds to, to make a veggie garden. And we've got a new house, like a, in, in a new house, so I thought I'll make something that's quite big, I can, you know, grow, in, grow into literally, um, and be able to do something a little bit more permanent. Well, we went from buying a veggie, like a garden patch, garden bed to then researching or wicking garden bed and now I've done all this research and now I went out and spent all of this money um, i had been putting it off because I thought it would be a lot of work and I had to buy more things and whatever so I decided to do it this morning but then by the time I got around to it then I got a phone call we got the plumber came around because our um, our bath tap was, um, like the pressure was really low. We got a new tap fixed in our kitchen and then our, um, our washing machine got fixed as well. And then as soon as he left, I got another phone call to say that the handyman from the, the real estate agent came and he wanted to look at the things that were broken around the house and he wanted to fix them, including the door. So he was here for about two hours fixing stuff and couldn't fix the, this, um, the oven, so he's got an oven man and then a, um, the blind man coming, uh, you know, blinds, like these blinds, not the blind man, like he can see, you know what I mean? Um, so then by the time I got around to it, it was midday and midday, you know, is the hottest time of the day, especially in Australia. So I decided I'd do some gardening in the full sun. So I know definitely that my garden is going to reach full sun all day because I was out there in 30 degree heat this morning, this afternoon. So what I did is I had to put black plastic, oh I laid cardboard down inside the, the garden bed. I laid black plastic and had to like use clips and then I had to lay another layer of plastic. 
clip it up so that the plastic didn't fall down. And then I put wood chips, some gravel, and then some bricks in there as well. Um, and then I put a layer of this uh, like weed mat. And then I use the potting mix. Turns out, even though I bought at least 10 to 12 bags of potting mix and like soil, wasn't enough. And I thought I could fit it in two garden beds. So it turns out I have not even enough for one. So I'm gonna have to take some, I've got some left, I'm gonna take that back and I'm gonna get cheaper potting mix so I can get more for my money and just kind of fill it. Um, but yeah, gardening's a lot, lot more expensive and a lot more work than I thought. So then I had to drive to my mum's house and get some equipment for it. And so it's still out there. One is three quarters finished and then one is one half a quarter started. So we're getting there slowly. But I'm, I'm loving it. I'm gonna be really excited this time tomorrow. I'll tell you all about it. We'll get the, the gardening update. But I actually set up my a tripod with my phone to do like a time lapse. Uh, but I don't know if it was too hot because my phone just kept stop like stopping. Um, so we'll see actually how much footage I've got. And I took lots of photos and things to show you all if you're interested. Who likes gardening? Who likes gardening out there? I'm sorry, April, I'll have it fixed for tomorrow. Um, oh, some, that was a lot of talking, a lot of some boringness, but yeah, that's one time. I hate gardening, really. It's a lot of fun. And I, I was talking to my brother on the way home as I was driving. Oh no, I got something on my book. No little bookie. All right, the cookbook's gonna go over here. Like that. We well, can't really see it, but that's okay. It's all right now. I hate gardening, dirt and bugs, no thanks. So Molly, how's the gaming setting coming up? The gaming setup hasn't really started. We have our, so we have my ring light, my like, halo light. Um, and so when we arrived, we bought Exceed one as well, so that he, we had his bedside lamp um, put on top of his computer and it was kind of like brightening one side of his face. So now he actually has a better light as well. We had planned to have, well, when we moved house, we had a lot of furniture that we, we couldn't really, didn't want to take. So what we did is um, put it in storage. Well, we went to the storage a few days ago and to borrow my mum's truck to bring it back to our house. We got there and someone had cut the wires in the truck. So like they either were trying to steal it or they were just trying to be like vandals. And so my mum has this like fifty, sixty thousand dollar truck that now does not work. And um, so that's really like sad for her, but it also meant that some of our stuff in storage we wanted to bring, we can't bring. So we had an idea of having a bookshelf behind where Exceed and I sit, and we were going to put things like the cookbook in there, um, like any figurines and things that you guys send us as well, we were going to put them in the bookshelf. Um, but we might, we got there and we couldn't even find the bookshelf, the one we wanted, so I don't know where it's gone. Um, so we might have to find something else. So this afternoon, uh, tomorrow morning, um, and tomorrow throughout the day, we'll kind of get it organized. Um, but it's pretty, like, it's much more straightforward than the cooking setup. Cold beer on a Friday night, definitely. We'll, I'll be having some, like, maybe like a gin and tonic or something like that. We'll see. Uh, we grew some of our own veggies this year, banana peppers, tomato, cucumbers, and squash. See, I've heard, the banana peppers, are like like yellow chilies, right? Yellow peppers, and but they're not spicy. And I've heard that they're really good in sandwiches or yeah. Hey Skip, how you doing? Um, poor Mama. Yeah, so it's really unfortunate because of their business. Um, they ha we had uh, like we had. Um, furniture trucks, or like removalist trucks. Um, 
and now she sold all of them except for one and now it's been vandalized. So it's really unfortunate um, and she just said you know she wishes that she could close down uh, like the business is probably uh, I'm gonna work down there for the next two weeks um, to kind of give me a little bit of income which would be good um, and kind of going to like a closing down sale with the business um, but it just really sucks that I don't understand why people would do that just to be little shits like to, to go under the truck and cut the wires so you physically can't move the truck um, so someone we have to either get it towed or have an electrician or something come into the, the property to fix it so kidda hello oh my gosh how are you being welcome back to my time zone how you doing because people are little shits they definitely are but it's very, very unfortunate. So, I have a question for you guys. So I was listening to the radio on the way home. Let's just get cooking. Um, I was listening to the radio this afternoon and I don't know if you guys saw, but a guy, did you see that guy that got his daughter to climb inside one of those, um, what are those like big arm things? What is that called? You know that, the, um, you put money inside it and then you've got to like, it's got a crazy claw and it like picks things up but you never win. What is that called? Maskatan, hello! What the heck? Camera has moved. Which camera? The claw. Claw machine. Yeah, okay. Claw machine, all right. Um, yeah, a, a man has, it, like it's made news worldwide. I think he was in the US. He got his daughter to climb into the machine and uh, give him all of the things that were inside there. Like there was a Nintendo Switch um, and I don't know if it was just a Nintendo Switch but all these other things. It is a new kitchen! Yes! I'm all confused. So we have moved back to um, Western Australia, our home state, um, to be closer to family, to focus more on streaming. So it is a brand new house, yeah. People are scummy. <laughs> yeah, so like I was, the question was on the radio, it was like, what has your parents asked you to do as a kid that like would be like not politically correct now or, or you know, be condoned, like not be condoned like right now. And one of the ladies rang in and said that um, her dad used to tell her to like hold on to the steering wheel while he was like opening a drink or um, like eating something. And like my parents used to do that as well. Like my dad would be like, oh, not really my dad, more my granddad would say, we like hold the wheel or whatever so I can do something. But that's what when we're on the farm, not on like a main road or something. Um, something that like we used to drive the cars around the farmyard. Um, like we had a big farm. And it's just funny, like, what are you, you, what are you guys? Like, do you have anything that your parents used to allow you to do that, like, wouldn't be allowed these days? Um, it would be illegal or it would be, like, frowned upon? Because I reckon, like, that rules and people's opinions have got so much stricter these days than when I was a kid and, you know, uh, when my parents were kids. You know, um, there's... Another guy rang up and said that his dad used to tell him to go into the store and buy cigarettes for him because he didn't want to get out of the car. Like, because, you know, then you had different laws and different, you know, people had different views on things. And things that were illegal, are illegal now, are completely different to what they used to, you know. My parents were really strict. Um, no one has anything? Uh, not all people let me add that in. <laughs> Alright, let me find this recipe. Uh, let's go some keto dinner rolls. See, did, did your parents used to let you do something like that, you know, you wouldn't be allowed to do these days? What about, um, you know, my... My mum, when I was a little bit older, but my mum used to let me like have a sip of wine, or and I, and I, I personally feel that 
that gave me a better relationship with alcohol than not having any and then as soon as I could at 18 like I have friends that were never allowed anything like alcohol and then as soon as they hit 18 they just binge drink all the time and have a really unhealthy um, and I'm not saying this is for everyone but a very unhealthy um, relationship with alcohol because they were not allowed it whereas my parents thought it was not a big deal and you know they drank in moderation as well and every now and then I like when I was 15 or whatever I would have like a glass of wine or 16 or whatever or like a sip of wine and it was never there was never this kind of like oh no you can't have that or you know this is for adults or whatever um, cycling without helmets no car seats yes oh yes that was us as well yeah we like never used to wear car seats and it was only when I was a little bit older that the law came in in Australia that you had to have a helmet when you were riding the bike. When I was younger, my dad used to give me uh, to help him bottle homemade wine. Oh, that's very cool. Used to drink beer, enough said. Mm -hmm. Raise his hand. I was like that. Soon as I moved out, I went nuts. Yeah. You know, there's like different, different parenting, different styles or whatever, and there's no wrong or right. Um, but you know, just some. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, my parents used to let us <gasps> sitting on the, the lap. You know, like when you're driving, and like not having seatbelts is one thing. But I remember sitting in the car, and then like we would sit on my grandmother's lap, or uh, we used to fit a lot of kids. Uh, um, I remember driving with my grandma. She was taking us somewhere on like a school holiday um, and it was me, my two brothers, my two cousins as well. There was five or six of us in the car. There was five or six kids and my grandma. So there was I, somewhere, there was at least one or two kids that didn't have seatbelts on and she used to say to us to hide if we saw any police. Oh, isn't that terrible? To like bob down if you saw like if you you stopped at the lights or whatever you had to bob down so that no one would see you. That's like, it's so bad. Like I would never with my kids. I would never act like that these days. But you know you could get away with things when you're you know in that era. Um, pretending to drive. Yeah. Within two years of moving out, I was probably spent over half that time drunk. Um, got mixed up with, ah, oh, ended up arrested like 10 times. Oh, goodness. How old were you when you moved out? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna find this recipe. What are we gonna do? Keto dinner rolls. These are, oh gosh, they're so good. But I'm gonna try and make them differently than I did last time. Cause I made them, I think they're one of the first things that I made in this house. Yeah, they were the first thing in the oven that I made. They were so good. Um, so we're gonna make like a keto dinner roll. So we're using almond flour. So ground almonds, mozzarella cheese. Uh, I need to go and get some cream cheese. We need four eggs. Baking powder. It says kill a friend's chicken. Oh no. It's 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 gonna be a healthy version of fried chicken. So it is, it's your it's your killer friend. Chicken is your friend. <laughs> Oops. Does it say friend? I didn't see. Okay. Killer fried chicken. What? I'm confused. Killer is like good. It's like really good chicken. Okay, so. Cream cheese, there. Shredded mozzarella, so we're gonna sh um, put that in the microwave. Four eggs. 
uh, some baking powder. No, it says fried. Just checking it's chicken. Oh. Yeah, it's chicken. But that would, this is the next, re we'll do that late, uh, recipe next. Uh, almond flour and some butter. Okay, so what you want to do basically is melt your cream cheese, your mozzarella together. And then when that's all melted, then you want to add your eggs and then you want to stir through your flour. Super easy. And then you want to put the oven. So we'll turn the oven on. I'll get rid of these terrible things. So you want a nice hot oven, 180, well it says 200 but depending, I like, I like 180 because I like to ensure that they're cooked inside. Sometimes if you have your oven too hot, it can cook the outside and leave the doughy center. You also need to look at what setting you're putting your oven, if it's conventional or if it's fan forced. Uh, fan force, what it's going to do is cook the outer faster, uh, especially with baking. A conventional, like a, a, um, a conventional oven, is better because it actually helps to rise your baked goods, like your cake, and then cook. So you're rising it, you're cooking it um, uh, thoroughly in the middle as it rises, and then you're going to get a crispy shell. So if you were to take two cakes that were identical and one was fan forced, what's going to happen is the, the fan forced cake is not going to be as high, but it's going to have a crispier outside. So the fan force is great for making things like cookies, um, roast, especially because you're getting that heat distributed throughout the whole oven. Whereas conventional means that its heat is going to rise, so then your first shelf is going to be hotter than your bottom shelf. Whereas fan forced, all that air is circulating, so it's it's all distributed. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're gonna get a bowl. So you want a microwavable bowl. Something like glass is really good. Okay. Let's have a look. Hey Google, what is eight ounces in grams? Eight ounces equal 226.796 grams. 226, did she say? Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. In here I have a glass bowl and I'm just going to add some cream cheese into here and we need 200 and 230. in chat I want to know your top three things of this week it is a Thursday so we're, we're nearly done with the work week um, and here in Western Australia it is actually a long weekend we have a public holiday on Monday so that's quite exciting uh, Exceed and I what are we gonna do for the, the long weekend Exceed uh, okay so in here is your cream cheese. Now we need mozzarella. So I'm gonna go. Um, do I want to chop it up this time? I think. Good morning. How you doing? Yazaga. Happy Thursday. What do you got planned for the rest of the day? The rest of your morning. Top three things of the week, like from your stream or in general? Because this is my first time here. No, I mean like in general. What what are two amazing things that have happened to you this week? What are your like fist pump moments? What's what's something positive? Or it's something you're grateful for? Come on guys. My top three things is hmm, let me think. 
it's it's been one is it's uh, our first yesterday was our first evening stream in this kitchen um, I got I'm starting to build my garden which is very exciting um, and what else hmm one, I got a house, so I am not going to be homeless in two weeks. Yes! That's exciting. Two, Twitch community made me a GoFund page, and it's already pay, paid most of my rental deposit. Wow! That's a Kidda, that's incredible! Holy dooly! You came back into my time zone for streaming! Lovely. Oh my gosh, it's so lovely that you're here. That's so great to hear. That's, it's, isn't that so lovely to have a community that's so supportive? You know, I feel very grateful every day to wake up and to be able to stream and see everybody. What about everyone else? Guys, what are, what are you, what's, what's good this week that's happened to you? Okay. So I think we decided to exceed last time you wanted some spices in this, in the in the bread rolls, some herbs, because they were a bit plain. Is that correct? So, mozzarella. The mozzarella is going to act as the very similar to gluten. What it's going to do is it's going to hold everything together, be quite stringy and stretchy. Uh, how much mods did you use? Uh, so about three cups. I should have weighed it, shouldn't I? I kind of just do it all by sucked. But yeah, about three cups. Why is it yellow and not white and squishy? It is squishy. So it is squishy, but it's just different processes. Um, when you think about it, this is a little bit more dry. So when you dry it, Molly streamed, got a sleep in, exceed added letter emotes. <gasps> Ash, that's very cool. Hey, you, I, I'm like that you guys love the these letters because I just came home from uh, being out this afternoon and I saw the letters. If you haven't been in our Discord and seen the letters, they're super cool. And see what words you can come up with. Um, not much has happened to me this week, mainly just glad my aunt's getting better and starting to recover from my heart attack two weeks ago. That's a positive, that's a really great thing to celebrate. Uh, sending lots of love to your aunt. It's dry mozzarella. Wish they sell that in Germany. Yeah, so it's like semi-dry. Uh, traditional mozzarella is the, the fresh one, whereas this has been uh, semi-dry. So it still needs to be refrigerated, but it has a longer life expectancy. Expectancy, like it's an animal. Um, yeah, you can make it yourself. We have made mozzarella on stream before, um, but it's just a semi-dry. So a lot of the moisture's come out and then it starts to turn yellow. So fresh mozzarella needs to be um, uh, in a brine or like a salty water and it's only got a life, um, like a shelf life of what, maybe a week, a week and a half, um, depending how fresh it is. Whereas this, this can be, if I didn't open this, this could be on the shelf for like a month and a half. And I didn't, I don't know when it was made. So, yeah, it says best before the 23rd of October. Crazy, right? Fresh one tastes so much better. I definitely agree with that, Sam. Definitely. For salads or as a pizza topping. Mm. But dry is better for making dough. Yep. Uh, Skip says, I went to men's breakfast Tuesday morning. Oh, that sounds really interesting. What did you do at men's breakfast? I got an incredible amount of food from the food pantry. Ooh. Uh, just a more comfortable week than last week. Oh, that's really great to hear. That's really good. My children love making mods. Mm. Do you stream it? That would be really cool. I've made it twice on stream. The, the second time worked better, but I'm still not great at it. 
So I'm just putting it in for 55 seconds. We're just going to uh, stir that and just get it all uh, greatly combined. All right. so, oh, I'll Sorry, Sam. Um, the residence permit for my wife is for three years instead of one, as I originally thought. What? So that... So she can stay... What does he mean? Like, you don't have to renew it for another two more years? That's really good. Uh, two, not much else happened this week. Ah, oh. But that that's really... That's like one of those fist pump moments. It's like, yes. Great. I love this. Thinking more, my mental health has been better this week. Lovely. And it's not been thinking about my ex as much. So there, that's great. That's definitely, that's a positive. Um, I think, you know, the definitely if, you know, you're feeling better, you're, you're feeling as though you're on top of things, you've got to look after yourself. So make sure, make sure you, you put yourself first and look after yourself. All right. So then this, is what your mix starts to look like. So you wanna stir it and then keep microwaving it. So you have to keep combining it so that as you stir it, because what will happen is these edges will start to, to melt and then if you don't stir it in, then they're gonna to start to burn and you don't want that. It does taste good, but you don't want it. This type. Press play. There we go. I mean, she's allowed to stay for three years before she has to renew it. Lovely. Because then I suppose the renewal costs money, right? So then you, it's, it's like a weight off your shoulders. It's great. I got a cupcake from one of my favorite cake shops yesterday. What flavor, April? Oh, I, I do like. The idea of getting, and we were talking about this the other day. Um, I do like the idea of getting like cakes and things. Even going out for food, I love the idea of people cooking for me. But sometimes I get a little bit annoyed and get frustrated because when you spend money on a on a meal or a cupcake and you're like, I could have made that better, or I could have done it like this, or I could have done it like that, then then I get like frustrated, where I should be grateful for that amazing cupcake. Whereas here I am thinking how I can do it better. Do you guys, uh, like, who, does anyone get like that? I think I can do this in this way. Or I should have got, oh, the worst, the worst thing is when you were like tossing up between two different flavors and you, you, you didn't like the one that you got and you're like, I should have got the other one. That one would have been better. The worst thing happens when exceed, um, exceed, uh, he picks the one that I wanted and it turns out to be better. Left me in October last year, but he's still in the house. Not being easy. Oh, kid out. I'm really sorry to hear that. Goodness me. No need to worry about someone. Um, oh, guys. Only thing I've had problems getting over is my anger. Okay. I think I think it's it's always hard when you break up with someone, um, and you end of a relationship, because you, you there's always a part of you that thinks, oh, you know. It could have, you know, hey, if I handled this situation differently, could it have changed? Or, you know, did I, you know, and you think differently, whereas it's really hard to let go. And, you know, time definitely is, is a great thing um, to help out. It was a tuxedo cake. So it was a chocolate cupcake with a white chocolate on top with frosting and chocolate pearls. Wow, that sounds great. Was it delicious? I've never heard of a tuxedo cake before. All right, so see, it's starting to combine nicely. So it's nearly all melted. There's just one or two chunks in there. And for me, I, I find that it's always best to get those chunks out 
Look at that. Look at this. I think that chunk is all melted out now. Oh no, it's not. A little bit longer, so maybe about 20 seconds, and that will give me time to crack my eggs and weigh my flour. Okay, so now we want one and a third cup of flour. Quarter, not helpful. One and a third is a group of local guys, mostly from church, who meet informally for breakfast on Tuesday to catch up. And this week, we set up making a handicap ramp for a man who's in the hospital. Oh, wow. All right, I'm going to read the rest of that. Let's just go into this first. Okay, so then you've got your mozzarella. Look at that. Damn. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit warm. So what we're going to do... Let's get a third of a cup in there. A cup of almond flour. Take this all away. And you want to stir this through as quickly as possible. And you want to incorporate it. If you get worried and it's, it's not stirring through evenly, just pop it in the microwave. And then in a minute, we'll start using our hands. Okay, um, uh, setting up a handicap ram for a man who's in a hospital also had a guy at breakfast who claims to be Howard Hughes' illegitimate son and calls him Howard Hughes, calls him Howard Hughes the third. He's even written a book. Hey Google, who is Howard Hughes? According to Wikipedia, Howard Robart Hughes Jr. was an American business magnate, investor, record-setting pilot, engineer, film director, and philanthropist, known during his lifetime as one of the most financially successful individuals in the world. Wow! Damn! That's amazing! Very interesting. Gosh! So... Was this, is this man a regular at your church? Or it just you met him today for the first time? That's really cool. Really cool. Um, so the tuxedo cake. April, is it good? Do you think, do you think we should make one on stream? The spoon. No, no, no. So that is your dough. Now we're going to crack our eggs. Oh, and then I forgot. Baking powder. Oh, I did this last time as well. So you need four tablespoons of baking powder. And I know it sounds like a lot, but if you get aluminium free baking powder, eggs, remember the eggs. If you get aluminium free baking powder, it's not as. Um, yeah, I was gonna say that before about, um, what am I saying? Aluminium free, it won't be as bitter. Hey Google, add baking powder to my shopping list. There we go. Okay, I've added baking powder to your shopping list. For heating up liquid, in glass is actually recommended to add a spoon. Oh. Sid told me the other day that I shouldn't, we shouldn't have a thing, uh, a bin up here because I'll throw things and it will let miss. That's exactly just what happened. Okay, mixing this powder in. I'm gonna get some. Uh, what am I gonna get? I need to get some herbs. Aluminium free baking powder, yeah. 
So this here is called uh, double acting um, baking powder, so that it it, it it reacts and it bubbles when it is in um, comes in contact with anything liquid, as well as the second time in heat. I probably won't ever buy it again, um, just because it it creates a false rise, in my opinion. Um, but it's already started to rise, which I don't like. Um, oregano. I'm gonna go oregano, garlic, thyme, and basil. Here we go. Oregano. Basil and some garlic powder. And then we're going to add our eggs. He's been here before, kind of a conspiracy theorist, says all the evidence of his being the son has been hidden by the Hughes Corporation. Ooh. Fairly, I think he's a bit of a con man. <laughs> All right, so. Oh gosh, this smells like Subway. <laughs> I think it's the, you know, the Italian club. No, not the Italian club, the Italian herb and cheese pizza. Oh, pizza bread. Gosh, where's my mind at today? So this is gonna help hold the pizza together. I usually do this with like a mixer or something just cause it's a bit bleh. You can add one at a time, it makes it less slippery. But that's incredible work Skip. I'm so impressed and so, you know, just in awe of you organizing that with your, your church friends and the boys. And I think also that's such a great initiative of getting young men together and to be able to communicate, to, you know, be able to, you know, create great positive relationships. This is sticky, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it aside and we're going to put it in the fridge, uh, and then that will take some time for that almond to uh, absorb some of the moisture. The fat content in there it will solidify to make it a lot easier to be able to handle. Okay. Let's do the last little mix. I might put some salt and pepper in there as well. He's moved in the area for the time being. Oh, nice. I never use garlic powder. I just cut the globes into small pieces. Yeah. I'm going to dry some garlic and try and make my own garlic powder. It's just easier. Um. Oh, I'm gonna need it. So I'll just put that straight into the fridge, guys. And we'll get stuck into some chicken. Um, um, okay, so the chicken we're going to use is the chicken that we deboned last night. So we're gonna cut that into some nice tenders um, strips. And we're going to coat it in a mixture of almond flour, some chia seeds, um, this is a recipe, I don't know why it was called killer fried chicken, uh, it's not, it's not like your traditional fried chicken, and coconut, this one's coated, coated in coconut as well. So what I'm going to do 
is here. I just have a bowl. I expected it to cover in chili. I'm gonna put some chili in there. You think, what does NGL stand for? NGL. Not gonna lie, okay. So, we had this conversation a few days ago. And what was it, Exceed? Um, what did BRZT say? Um, oh, is it in, is it in my honest opinion or in my humble opinion? I am HO. Super spicy, killer fried chicken, okay. All right. Well, let's make it spicy then, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to get some, something, something I forgot. Um, um, chia seeds. I just stood in the pantry thinking, what am I doing? I was like, what am I looking for? Honest. I used to say honest. In my honest opinion, yeah. SMH is another one people get wrong. Because I said honest and BRZT said humble. But I, I like both. I think both work. Definitely. And see, OP. Oh, this is why I always say, I, I always thought OP was on point, but overpowered, supposedly. Supposedly it means overpowered. Wouldn't you know? Uh, the group got together because of a guy that, like me, that his depression uh, made him withdraw. It's been meeting nearly every week for about eight years with about four or five guys. Wow. That is a great initiative. I think that, that needs to happen more throughout. I love that skip. I think my my brother was trying to do something simple, a similar with my cousins and bring, you know, we were really close as kids and uh, I have a big group of male cousins and it's only myself and I have a younger um, female cousin. Whereas my brother was trying to get, this is when we lived in another state, who was trying to get my cousins together and like have like a, a get together just so they could catch up and you know talk you know without adults or you know without their parents or whatever um getting you know to know each other again and supporting each other especially my younger cousins who you know these day and age have a lot different you know struggles than when we were kids and they, we were their age shakes my head not so much hate as people okay shakes my head see i hmm, i've never heard of smh i don't think i think i may have seen it primus oh my god oh my god oh my god did i build up the suspense <laughs> hey primus how you doing how hard was it to do it first so is it just more of a social thing for you, Skip, or do you guys talk about, you know, yourselves and, uh, you know, anything personal? Like, it, but it's, is, is it mainly just to kind of socialize and just get out of the house and be around other, you know, like-minded people? I think it's great. All right, so we're gonna put some chili in here. So chili flakes, as well as some ground chili. There's not a lot in here. Hey, Aussie Rose, welcome back. I'm a keto KFC too. Lovely. So in here we have almond flour, chia seeds, coconut, chili flakes, and chili, ground chili. Three, for me, very, and it still is. It's lots of times don't, 
Um, I lots of times don't go for months at a time, but they still uh, get me to meet up with them occasionally. Oh, that's lovely. Because you know it's there when you when you need it. And like you don't have to go, but it, it's something positive. And you know, creating, oh wow, except you're showing me a photo. Is that, is that Bob? <gasps> How did I know it was Bob? Yes, Jazzy's, Jazzy's little mini ears. Just looking at photos on Discord. Okay. All right, what are we gonna do? In another bowl, we're gonna dip, uh, create some whisked eggs. Two kilo bag of chicken legs and freeze them. Oh, wow. Ozzy Rose, what do you put in your chicken? I'd love to hear. If you want to send me a recipe, maybe we could try it on stream. Okay. Oh, my cup of tea is going cold. So, here we're gonna get some eggs. Where did I put them? So the egg is great for binding and kind of acting as a glue. So, Jesse, I have to work and I have to pack. All right, I hope to hear from you on your travels. If you, I know you won't be watching the stream, but very exciting time. Good luck with packing. Oh no, you're still here. Look, reason 555 why the stream deck is more important than ever is because where it is now, the, the iPad, if it touches anything, it like, changes um, hopefully I am gonna work working for my mum for the next two weeks because um, I've applied for a job but I just need to wait I need to like a nurse proper job but I need to wait for my blood results so it's kind of delayed so if I can help my mum out as well then I can get some money and hopefully we can buy some new equipment all right, so this is, as I was saying, the egg acts as though, very similar to a glue. So we're gonna dip the, the, um, the chicken. Usually I use like a flour, but we're gonna do a keto, so we're gonna go no flour. Um, so straight from the, the chicken into the egg and then into your crumb, okay? Should we bake it? Uh, it's a combination, Molly. We actually have a Christmas dinner each yeah, for local people who don't have a, a place to go for Christmas. Oh, wow. It's around 60 people each year now. Oh my goodness. And I bet that there's some people that look forward to it every year and you know, it's, it's their social gathering. That's amazing. So it's a nice social group doing good works, definitely. Wow. That is so, I'm just so impressed. And like, that is such a great thing that you're doing, Skip. I think. I'd love to be able to do something similar to that. You know, get out in the community. And also, you know, have it in our community as well. Have some type of get, um, you know, get together or something even virtual. Because everyone in you know, our community is so spread out across the world. Having something like that. Well, I think that's what our stream is kind of thing. You know, somewhere people can go. Um, you know, our Discord is where our, you know, our community interacts and it's a place where everybody and anybody is welcome with open arms and we, we laugh we joke we get to know each other we uh, support each other through things this is why I like twitch for some reason I'm more comfortable talking to people here and that's great it's so great Garlic and onion powder, smoked paprika, pepper and sage oregano, basil, celery salt and marjoram. I've heard a lot about celery salt, um, but I don't know, I've never tried it, so I think I should. Okay, so I'm just going to 
I'm using the wrong knife, but I, I don't want to get another one dirty. So what I'm going to do is just... Hey, Chester. Depending how big you want your pieces, just cut your chicken into strips, probably like that. Coconut flour and almond flour. Oh wow, that sounds delicious. And then do you bake it or do you fry it? Rose, I'm gonna call you Rose. So this time tomorrow will be our gaming stream, uh, our first gaming stream. So we're going to finish our setup um, tomorrow and get live tomorrow afternoon. We're going to start a little bit earlier so that we can um, play games a little bit later because Exceed usually starts work at like 3.45 or something like that. So. You know, I think he'll be ready for bed quite early. So that's why we're going to start earlier. Yeah, we're going to play Two Point Hospital to start with. Uh, oh, except do you think we should start with Two Point Hospital? Or we should start with some Overcooked? What? You're baking. I went to a concert with my friend last December. It was pretty fun. Oh. What kind of concert was it? I spray it with olive oil spray. That's very nice. That sounds delicious. There we go. So what I'm gonna do, come here. I made some chicken stock, which is the big pot on on the stove. And I was going to, well, the thing was I ordered all of this chicken in the food order, uh, but they were out of stock of chicken, which I don't understand. So luckily we had this chicken from last night that I deboned um, because I was going to make some chicken soup with the chicken stock, but now I don't have any. Um, what can we do with chicken stock? Chicken soup. Um, it was just a wrap thing in a dive by downtown. Ritz and some other people. Oh, lovely. AK Hata. How do you say that? Welcome. How you doing? How can someone be out of stock of chicken? That's what I said. Uh, so they're out of stock of chicken. AK Akata. How you doing? Welcome. Thank you for that fellow. Um, now, out of stock of chicken, they were out of stock of lemons, so they gave me, like the packaged lemons, so they gave me five individual lemons, and they were out of, they, the lettuce was not available in my area. Don't ask me. Weird. Weird, weird, super weird. Hello, dogs. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little bit of pan frying and then we're going to finish them off in the oven. There should be a lactose intolerant friendly show. Why lactose intolerant? This is it, lactose intolerant. I did wipe it. Does it still need wiping? Look, that's better. <laughs> Oops. It looks so much better than it did. I didn't even realize. Okay. 
So what we're doing is, can you guys see this? Nope. All right, we'll go, we'll go back here. Ash has won the competition on Discord. I didn't even know there was a competition going. All right. Is this with the, the letters? So what you're gonna do is usually just use it hand. I never should use my left hand because then I always incorporate my right hand somehow and then get that dirty as well. But what you're doing is just crumbing this and then we're going to put that in the right pan. Egg meat. Hey Vivid Chrono, how you doing? What? Except what? Who could make the longest word given the new Discord emoji? Okay, what was the word? And Ash, did you use the Scrabble, the Scrabble cheat? What was this word? Okay, so go over to the stove. repeating. This actually looks better than I thought. I didn't know if it would actually work out. And I've got some tongs here. I had some tongs. There we go. And what we're going to do is, once they're nice and brown, we're going to finish them off in the oven. So now I have one, I have one dirty hen and I have to try to cut this baking paper. Oh, Chester. Chester just got scared. I don't know why. My brain and a notebook. Mike, what? And assessors? Assessors is with the word. Great job. Maybe we should do it like you know that um you know the the thing in the newspaper where you have to make a word but you can't repeat the letters. What about that? Because then that's probably not the longest, is it? What am I doing? I'm supposed to be taking this over here. job properly. Okay. Do did you milkless? Doggo needs to go outside. No problem. When I read that, because Chester's standing next to me, I thought you were telling me that Chester needs to go outside. I was like, he usually scratches at the door. He's annoying like that. And the good thing about this is that the, the coconut's going to go really crispy. And the chia seeds are going to be really delicious and crunchy. Alright. Keep going with your, your flour and everything. 
kind of want the more egg on there. You don't want too much egg, but at the same time you want enough that it's sticky. There we go. Back over to the stove. And then what kind of dipping sauce? I feel like something like a herb mayo or something like that would be really good. Do you have a ranch recipe? Teach me your ways. It was ranch always like, I don't know. Uh, it's just something that I've, I've tried and it never worked, but it's so damn good. It's creamy, it's zesty, it's everything that you want in a dressing. Do you agree? Are there people out there that hate ranch? Do any of you not like ranch dressing? I'm just gonna get some more almond flour. Just to do these last ones. More things I can't have anymore. Is this because uh, your Lactose? Surely you can find lactose into uh, like lactose-free ranch dressing. You can find anything these days. Um, you can find milk-free milk. You can find, you know, things like oh, just just. Any food, there's always like a, an, an intolerant version, like a, you know, someone who has allergies. I think that if, especially foods and things have come so far. I remember my friend who is celiac. She could never go anywhere, never eat anything. She always had to bring her own food. And now there's gluten-free, like gluten-free foods everywhere. And a lot of restaurants and stuff specialise in gluten free food. It's so exciting. Wash your fingers because your fingers end up like that. I serve mine with Greek yogurt and harissa paste mixed in to give it a. Oh, I have some harissa spice. That's a great idea. Great idea. Carissa is such a, a lovely flavor mix. So I had it for the first time on the weekend. Paul Newman's own ranch. Is that available in Australia? <gasps> what? That's true. Oh goodness. Oh God. I went to a class, a gym class, and 
it didn't feel like I worked out. Like I, it, I felt like a little bit warm, but I left and I said to Exceed, it's not really a great workout. I've woken up this morning and it's literally getting worse throughout the day. I just sneezed and all of my ab muscles, I, like, I just had to like hold my belly, just like, you know, like a, a lady that's just given birth. Like I just I had to hold my stomach because it's so painful. So it was this, this workout using um, resistance bands and stuff. And oh damn, I'm so sore. All these ab muscles that I never knew I had. I'm Australian, so yes. All right. I'll have to look out for it. Hey Google, add ranch dressing to my shopping list. Uh, last time okay, I had ice cream. I added ranch dressing to your shopping Very, list. Well, I was freaking it out. Uh, I threw up for 30 minutes. Oh, damn. Half a gallon of will cost as much as a gallon of regular. Mmm, yeah, it's costly. Yep, I can agree with that. Hey, Chester. So this is the chicken so far. So it's just on, oh, wrong one, let's see. So, that's the chicken so far. And we're just gonna put these last ones on there and then put them in the oven, just to help them crisp up and cook through. Uh, we have some meats like beef and lamb, you can eat them and still be pink in the middle. No way, no way, never eat chicken that is not cooked through. Oh my gosh. I promise you, even if they tell you it's safe, don't ever eat it. As a nurse, trust me. That's a nice view out, Sam. This is my um, home state. This is the city. So we wanted to show you where we've just moved to and how beautiful it is. So this is Perth, guys. Are you using a batter or breadcrumbs? Daz! We used a mixture of almond flour, coconut, uh, chia seeds, and then spices. So we used um, oregano, chili, Chili flakes, chili powder, basil, and thyme. No, we didn't. Not for that. Hold on. Hold on. Take it back. Almond flour, coconut, chia, chili. Is that it, guys? Do we use anything else? It's just chili, right? Chili flakes and chili powder. Because it's the, the, the other things that we're going to make that have the oregano in. I was getting confused. Trying to refrain from making too many jokes about Chester. C in CID stands for Chester. A. I called the person talking to them and they are waiting for some. What? I've been buying it for years. Oh, I never knew that. Oh, I'm hearing back from Reddy's. <laughs> okay, so that's in there. Let's make this, this dressing, this Carissa. Carissa dressing. So I've got Greek yogurt or sour cream. Greek yogurt or sour cream. I'm gonna go with sour cream. This because I've got some cream. Mm. I'm gonna do a bit of both. I can't decide. I can't decide, so I'm gonna do both. So this is for Aussie Rose. It's kind of kind of Ozzy Rose's suggestion. So, in there, we're gonna do some sour cream. This is just for some creaminess, like that. And then, some Greek yogurt. 
<laughs> when you can't pick between two things, just do both. Yeah. That's it. So other than this, uh, Chester, you can definitely eat. The chicken you can eat. It's got no dairy or lactose in it. All right, so mix them through together. Mm. We need some more yogurt. It has really fresh. Because the creaminess of the sour cream and then the zestiness of your Greek yogurt. And then the harissa. So harissa is a, a spice mix of cumin, garlic, paprika, which are my favorite spices. Uh, you've also got some mint in there as well. Uh, remember, so this is a dry powder and I'm adding it to a, like a yogurt to rehydrate it. So it's really easy to do too much. So what you wanna do is put some in there, let it sit for about five minutes and then taste it or, you know, then before you add too much because it, when it, once it rehydrates, it's gonna be a lot stronger. So I made that, that mistake before. So you can definitely taste the mint in there, the cumin paprika as well, and the garlic. I want to get my hands on the harissa paste, or even make it myself. Mm. Here's more. I may live to regret this. All right, and then we're gonna let that sit. But. Like a Middle Eastern spice mix with some Greek yogurt. It's definitely going to make a really nice dipping sauce for our chicken. It has coconut, almonds. It's going to be really nice. Mmm. Yum. Okay. That's why I'm here. I never knew that. What do you mean, what, what do you know about the... There is an ingredient called lac... Um, a thing that you can get from your pharmacy, Chester, called lactase. And what it does is you can buy regular milk and you, you squeeze, I think it's two drops per litre, I think that's what it is. And what it does is you let it sit for about five minutes and it breaks down the lactose uh, so it's lactase, L-A-C-T-A-S-E, and you drop it into normal milk, and it does it breaks down the lactose, so then it makes lactose-free milk. And you can do the same thing with yogurt, um, and you should look into it if you're lactose-free. Uh, it may be something you've looked into, um, but there was a time where I bought it because I was trying to cut down lactose because I thought that it was making me unwell. So we're gonna have cereal again. Yeah. Mmm. Let's do this. More salt. More spice. This one up my spicy. More spicy. And I, I'd even put some lemon juice in this as well. I think. It would make it really good. I will say that almond, um, almond milk cereal is amazing, hmm. but it is also to make um, it more accessible for you, you know, to be able to eat what you used to eat to a degree. Um, my friend's lactose intolerant, but she said ice cream, there's something in ice cream, the way that they make it, the way that there's an ingredient that breaks down the lactose so she can eat regular ice cream it's just the milk that she can't eat but everybody's different i suppose all right so i'm putting this away and we're gonna get out now mixture for our bread rolls so they're there oat milk i've never had oat milk the only thing that i've come close to oat milk is Soaking some oats and then blending them, I think, for a recipe. 
That was like oat milk. But it's, I suppose it's the same way you make oat milk. Let's go over the stove. Let's check it on this chicken. Oh, damn. Look at these beauties. Okay, so you just want to kind of do a little poke. And the way to test, look how good that looks. Ooh. It's probably kind of the fattest one that you can find, the biggest, chunkiest one, and cut it in half. And then if it's cooked, you're looking like all of that nice and juicy. Uh, if, if this one's cooked, then the other one should be cooked. And if you worry, just let them you know, go for a little bit longer, a few more minutes. But I think that looks really good. It's still really juicy. They all seem quite well cooked. Um, could be a difference um, in American ingredients and all that. You know, we Americans like to put kind of put all kind of shit in our food for some reason. This is true. Definitely true. Hmm. So usually I have uh, I have some um, preparation bowls and like. Um, plating bowls that I can't find since the move, so I have to be able to find them again. Okay, pop that to the side. We'll get the piece and bring it over. There we go. Look at this. So if you want it crispier, you want it a little bit like crunchier, you can put it in the oven for a little bit longer. But I think this is looking great as it is. If it's hot, get tongs. Don't burn your fingers like me. Oh, this looks so good. Right. Maybe we'll keep these little pieces. Put them there and then we'll eat them. So I'm going to take this tray. I'm going to reuse it. Oh no! It spilled on my bench. So I want to reuse this. Cornbread is good. I don't think I've ever had proper cornbread. I have an issue with corn. Um, I ate some really bad corn cake one day. And the moist corn bread or corn cake, the thought of it makes me feel really sick. Like, oh. I can't think of it, like, because it reminds me of that day, the smell, it just takes me back. Because I was violently ill for about two days. Probably the worst time of my life. Chicken and waffles is so good. So you just put this like this, like that. Okay. So this, and dunk it in there. Mm. You have to try chicken and waffles. Look at this, guys. So yummy. And then this harissa is really nice. Whereas I had a little, little, there it is. A little one that I wanted to dip in. Tropical flavour 
flavour of the toasted uh, coconut. You've got some crunchiness when you bite in and you chew of the chia seeds. And I think the almond flour, you don't really taste it, but it kind of is just, the, you know, the goodness. But the highlight is the coconut. That's what you can really taste. And then the spices, the, the really nice chili. And then this dipping sauce is really nice as well because it's that refreshing flavor of the Greek yogurt, the creaminess of the sour cream. And the highlight in here for me is that mint coming through, that little bit of mint um, and the spices, the cumin and paprika, really works well together. Um, and these are perfect for sharing. You just grab them, dip it in, and you're done. Well, it's a bit messy. Maybe every, each person have their own dipping sauce. Whoops. I left a chunk in there. There we go. Have like a spoon in here. Like that. Mmm. so juicy because it's just cooked enough like when you you cook chicken and you cook it a little bit too far it starts to get really dry whereas this as soon as you bite into it you get that really nice mouthful of really you know juicy flavor from the chicken and then the dressing like the the dressing and the seasoning as well well it's not lost because you know then when it's too dry just like a the cupcakes and things that we were talking about last night when you feel like you need a drink straight after, you know that it's overcooked. Mm. You saw the dog him walking past, his reflection. Mm. All right. So here is the dough for our bread rolls. What I'm gonna do is use this actually because what I want to do is stay hopefully together and make like a little bit mm, I don't know if I want to do this like this I'm gonna do it once to see if it works wet my hands with some like just plain water because it helps the mixture not to stick to your hands so put this in there so just wet your fingers and then it helps it not stick about the same size. Why do people not remove rings when cooking? Uh, I, I usually use, but if you get food under them, definitely, but I clean my rings um, every night before I go to bed and I wash my hands thoroughly. Um, yeah, so if I'm using, this is not too bad because it's just getting under this ring, this bit here. Um, but if I'm using mints or anything that's like a bacterial risk, then I will take my, um, definitely take my rings off um, because of the bacteria in there. This is just more mess uh, from like out of anything. Um, but yeah, definitely valid question. Uh, it's really important to take your rings off um, when you're dealing with meat particularly. So, I think like that will be enough. My mum never took hers off. Okay. 
Uh, I feel like I need some more baking paper, but my hands are all dirty. Ugh. Definitely, I know. Like, I know a lot of people that don't like the the feel of raw meat, so they wear gloves, or they just don't like to cook for that reason. Would pop gloves? Yeah. Yep. It's it's always best practice if you're in a commercial kitchen. Um, I'm just cooking for Exceed and I, so I always make sure that I'm doing the best possible way and I'm always washing my hands um, bef like before touching other things and whatever because you always want to be it's better to be safe than sorry than you know contaminating things getting people unwell here we go so if you have these touching I think they rise better because they rise up not out let's try You've got mozzarella, um, almond flour, and sour, uh, and sorry, cream cheese that are going to keep it together and bind it. Um, and then we've also added some garlic powder, uh, oregano, basil, and thyme as the, the flavor component in there as well. You can do them without spices, so then you can use them sweet and savory. Um, and a little bit of salt and pepper. You can put some butter on top as well as you wanted to. Uh, when I worked in commercial kitchens, I washed my hand like every 10 minutes. I took the health regulations way more seriously than any other of my bosses. That's great. Um, as a theatre nurse, I'm uh, a little bit lax at home, but um, in operating theatre, you, if you're, you're sterile or you're gowned, you can't touch anything that is in, in a certain area and you have to act in a certain way and you, can't, you have to have your hands between here and here. Um, and things are deemed contaminated and you know you learn a lot about bacteria and I think my in my opinion with bacteria and immune system immunity is that you need rather than especially with children you need to to gain a, and grow your immune system you know strong and do it in the right way um, you know, by rather than being fearful of germs and things like that, the more that you come in contact, the more that you're, well, slowly, you don't have to like go wham, bam, and whatever. Um, never to touch your hair and face, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, if I was cooking for other people, I am a lot more observant of things like that, but. We're just cooking for like myself and Exceed, um, and I'm not as I'm not as stressed. Right. Into the oven. Do, 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 do. But rather than being like wrap, wrapping your kids or wrapping yourself up in cling film and bubble wrap. You need to get that exposure to 
increase your immune system so that when you do by accident get exposed to bacteria or you know someone with the flu you already have an immune system so you're stronger and you can fight it Jester 10 hello Jester Shin oh my gosh welcome back is that ISF? I can't see it. You're... Give soldiers shots, which will make them make them sick, but it, it's to help their immune system uh, when they're deployed. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the whole basis. It's it's not initially to make you sick. Um, what it is is it's a uh, initial exposure of a like a bacterium that creates um, a, an immune response in your body. To, to fight that illness. So the second time, it destroys that, that bacterium. Uh, so it, that's the way it works with um, uh, vaccines. So I, as a healthcare worker, I'm thoroughly, as a, uh, as a person that lives in a first world country, I'm totally for vaccines. And, and I know there are people out there that, um, that aren't, but my personal, belief is that everyone you know the reason that we don't have certain diseases like polio and um, you know ones that have been eradicated is because of that um, those vaccines Joseph, hello how you doing uh, my friend said it sucked because they basically gave him a cocktail yeah and that's the same like what in in Australia I know that you have a regime um, from when you, you grow up uh, every few months and then um, uh, depending on what illness is. So every year there is a flu vaccination that is available through, through the government and basically it is uh, different bacteria, so different strains of bacteria um, so that it gives you a, a, an immune response to uh, different strains of you know the flu or whatever so that your immune system can is in a much higher capacity to fight um any illness or like that you might catch in the in the public and just got home from work and munching on homemade uh snack mix oh what's in your snack mix that sounds interesting all right so we're gonna prepare i've not had a flu shot in years i don't even know how long yeah but if you like if you're in the in the public and you're um, you know, coming in contact with different things, you will have picked up that strain or whatever um, in different ways and you have a strong immune system. If you're eating a lot of um, healthy vegetables, um, exercising, looking after yourself, then your immune system is more likely um, because you've got homeostasis. Uh, I'm just throwing out big words. Um, okay, so these raspberry bombs, Usually I'm supposed to have my food processor that I thought I would have today, but the lid hasn't arrived again yet. So let's see if we can do it. Hmm. I got eight shots Saturday, five dollars a piece. Oh, that's cheap. Damn. All right. I'm waiting for our things to bake. Oh, just as falling asleep on the couch. A bowl of breakfast pudding. What? Check cinnamon life cereals, raisins. Toast, roasted peanuts, M&Ms, and cinnamon apple chips. What? Wow. What is a cinnamon life cereal? That, what is a cinnamon life cereal? That is interesting. Last time I went to the doctor, I got two shots and they had to pay almost $200. Wow. Hey, Mino. When did someone gift me a sub? Oh, Mino, you weren't, were you here yesterday? We got um, a, a drop of 10 gift subs. We're very, very lucky. 
So that's, it might have been yesterday. So we've got some raspberries here. So I don't have my food processor, so I'm hoping I can just mix it with my hand. You're a very lucky minnow then, aren't you? Go to the pharmacy and get a prescription, which were, oh goodness, $100 prescriptions. Um, some cinnamon and very little sugar. Okay. All right. Can we still renew gift subs? You can. For s I think so. We'll just have to confirm that with Exceed. <laughs> okay, so then I have coconut in here. We might need a big spoon. Okay, so we want to wait till these kind of defrost a little bit because they've just come out of the, up, the oven, the microwave. Nope, that's not even it either. The freezer. A bit of stevia. Just to kind of balance out that tartness from the raspberries. You can add nothing if you wanted to or if you have maple syrup if you're doing... Um, if you're not worried about what sweetening you use, some honey. I'm just trying to use uh, here. Never thought about using live cereal as snack mixes. Gonna try it out. Yeah. This is cool. I love when you guys teach each other pretty cool things. Breakfast pudding was a kitchen experiment which ended up pretty well. Rough recipe further up. Okay. Breakfast pudding. Container of Greek yogurt. Two cups of peanut butter. So how much is a container of Greek yogurt? Is that one of the big ones? Five or six bananas, thoroughly blended in my Ninja. Mix in raisins and top, wow, that sounds good. Other than the b blended banana, I'm not really, I don't like the, the texture of blended banana other than when it's in baked goods. Like I couldn't eat it for like, it would have to be cooked, I think. Or frozen. Shutting the light. Oh, these muffins are looking good. Not muffins. Bread. Bread. What are you making now? So this is like, um, I'm going to have to put it in the microwave, I think. Uh, it's supposed to be like a, I don't know, like a raspberry, like a bliss bulb kind of thing. Like a fat bomb. I don't need to blend up, my niece is just really good at Fruit Ninja. I'm a cook at heart, I love it. I just uh, just can't keep up in a commercial kitchen. Yeah, it goes very, very, very fast. Sorry about all the noise. 32 ounces, okay, so a big one. The texture of the banana mixes into the yogurt and homogenizes it. So you don't really experience it. Mm, okay, I'll have to try it out. Because I've definitely, I know, I have heard of the peanut butter and yogurt, and it makes like a really nice um, like dip. You could put like um, fruit pieces and stuff and use it as like a really nice dip or a snack. But I like the idea of it as like a breakfast pudding. It sounds amazing. So how long have you been making this breakfast pudding for? Okay. I'm just thinking what I'm gonna do. Hmm. Ah, 
slash double nothing. All right, let me put this in here and then we can get a going. All right. Oh, I'm making a mess. Okay. So I'm just gonna put, put the mute. Oh, let's just play some basketball. Are you ready? We have three shots of the hoop. Let's go. So it's home versus away. I am winning. Home is winning. My house is winning. Let's see if we can continue. If I get any in, the game's done, then I get a point. If I get that in, you guys get a Congratulations, Ash, you beat me. GG. Um, I put it in some Tupperware and refrigerated it and it's set up pretty nice. Mm. So it has a bit of a stiff consistency, stiffer consistency. That's great. This is the first batch I ever made. Oh, good. So you're going to start doing it more often? Okay. So I'm going to put this in here. Raspberries, coconut, chia, some stevia. We're gonna blend it and make it do a quick miss mix. So I'm gonna mute the mic. Alrighty, this is looking good. So usually I'd use a food processor and I've made it before. And <laughs> she can't hear what we're saying. No, you guys can't hear what I'm saying. About you. Usually it's is it are they, am I muted? That's what I say. Like, is it muted to exceed? He's like, yep, and then my, my, oh, that minnow is back. Minnow pause is back. Okay. Oh, 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 these might be ready to come out. Move, move this other way. Okay. Look at that. So then these are bread rolls that you kind of pull away from each other. And it does look a little bit better when you have um, blanched almond flour, the almond flour that, uh, no, still not cooked. A few more minutes. The almond flour that is pale because it doesn't have any skins. That's the better one to use because it just looks more like a bread roll. You get me? Okay. It's like monkey bread, yeah, very similar. I think that's what it's called, monkey bread. So this is your, I think I didn't put enough coconut. It's meant to be more coconut than raspberries. It's like a, it's supposed to be, has anyone heard of a cherry ripe? It's like Australian chocolate bar that's got cherries instead of obviously raspberries. We can eat this like it is. Mm. It's really cold though. Um. I can feel Exceed's face light up with a smile whenever I comment. <laughs> he does love you, Minnow. 
You'll be able to see him tomorrow in the new house. With Evenings with Exceed, our gaming stream tomorrow night. So very similar to that, but the food processor usually blends it a lot nicer. And then it's like a, what's it called? A, like a fat bomb kind of thing. Well, but it's got not a lot of fat in it, does it? How can we make this better? Could we add some, maybe cream cheese to make it like a cream cheese or cream? I don't know. No, Minnow, they're not in the ground. We're a step closer. They'll be in the ground this time tomorrow, promise. Um, I put some photo. I will put some photos up tonight, straight after stream, including everything um, so far. So I've done put the the construction of the the garden beds. I've put some cardboard at the bottom, and then I've laid some builder's plastic or like pond fill, two layers of that to create like a reservoir, and then I've put a pipe through sitting on the plastic and then I've covered it with wood chips and some stones and then I've put um, a weed mat so that it's like creates a layer between this is ash that I was telling you about um, so the the worms don't go through um, and also the soil can't go into the um, into the stones and it creates like a, um, a you know a separation um, and then I've also put some some potting mix some compost in there um, and yeah, some all different like fertilizers and stuff. And then tomorrow I've just got to fill it up a little bit higher and then I'm going to start planting. So it's nearly there. And then I have another one of them to do. So I, I got them two. I only really needed one, but I got two for cheap. Um, the second one for cheaper. So I decided to make two, but it will be good. I think uh, getting them both there, I think it will be great. And then they'll start growing, and I think I'll be—I think I'll be grateful in the end for having two. So, yeah, thank you for asking. Yeah, I don't know about this. I wonder. I'm going to separate some in here. And try something. I'm gonna try something. This may or may not work out. Mm, sweet enough. some cream cheese that have just melted slightly. It's like a nicer creamier consistency. I shouldn't have got a square bowl. It's not very conducive to stirring. sevens will have to be limeless oh no so when we move to this house we have no no real grass no soil in this house um, there's stones and there's turf like fake grass so what I've done is I've set up the garden beds in um, on the top of the stones but the owner had bought a lemon tree and put it in a pot. The pot is about this big. And nowhere in the, you know how you buy 
it from the the garden the garden store and it usually tells you like what size pot it should be um, the only thing that I can find is that it's ornamental but I still think that it's a full-size lemon tree it's not a dwarf and I don't feel like it should be in a pot and they want it's on our property condition report so that we're responsible for it but I really don't think that it's the right size plant and there's no way to plant it in the ground and I'm definitely not buying a bigger pot for it so I don't know hey Google what is an ornamental plant According to Wikipedia, ornamental plants are plants that are grown for decorative purposes in gardens and landscape design projects as houseplants for cut flowers and specimen display. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. This is quite nice. So what I think I'll do is put it in the fridge or the freezer. And mm, I don't know. Maybe I should get a plate. Oh no! Let's go to the stove real quick. Where's your bread rolls? Oh, they look so good. Lemon tree loves Mattitude. <laughs> or squash and cucumbers didn't do real good this year either. Oh, I'm growing um, spaghetti squash um, and also cucumbers, zucchini, kale, lettuce, spinach, tomatoes. I'd like to get a dwarf lemon and lime tree, but we need to save up for that. Since I got married, I found out that you can use basil plants over longer periods of time by watering them. They have to throw them away after three days. What? What do you mean basil plants? What do you mean, Sema? Do you buy the plant like at the grocery store? Is that what you mean? The weather this year has been horrid here. Whereabouts are you located? If the tree is over three or four foot, it should be producing lemons if it is going to. Mm, the, my, my lemon tree, it's this big. Like the pot is this big and then the lemon's this big. There is a photo of it in Discord. In Alabama. Sweet home Alabama. I bet you get that all the time. But I don't think it's going to, to grow yet, grow any lemons. My name has just knocked on the door and said to bring everything indoors. Storm are coming. Oh, kidda, be safe, look after yourself. Um, what was I trying to find? A plate. So what I'm going to do is do this like you would like frozen yogurt and just create little niblets style things like and then freeze them and then you can cover them in like a coconut oil chocolate if you wanted to as well and then roll them into nicer pieces I would guess A better way to do this, I think the texture of the coconut is a bit annoying to chew. That's the only downfall. Um, so you could definitely just do raspberries with cream cheese and then it's like a, like a, a cheesecake. Cheesecake bites. So you could eat them straight out of the freezer or straight out of the fridge, whatever you like. Great for kids, I think. Great for a nice pick-me-up snack. And they said tonight it will start and tomorrow then the, de uh, the next day will be worse. Oh, wow. 
What has everyone got planned for the weekend this weekend? It is Thursday here. What do you guys got planned coming up? It's a long weekend for us. We have a public holiday on the Monday. Um, exceeds not working and then I am going to be working on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week to help out my mom. That would be nice. Have some time off together. Exceed's been working 4 a.m. to 3 uh, 4 a.m. to 3 p.m. But it, like the time, it, the times work out actually, because by the time he's on a break, then it's the time I wake up and we can have like a cup of tea or breakfast together. Um, it is board game night. Yes, Exceed. Thank you for reminding me. So we are starting this fun thing with all my family. Hopefully it's fun. <laughs> we're very competitive. Um, but basically what happens is uh, we're hoping that it's at our house every fortnight because then we can prepare the food on stream. But every two weeks, all of the family are coming here. Um, my mom, my mom's partner, my two brothers. Well, it's really whoever, whoever in the family is, is welcome. Um, we prepare the food on stream and then they come over at night time and we play board games. And so it's ten dollars per person, and um, that's to help us. Like, so we, we prepare all the food, and then we just like a family fun night where we can play games and like just have some nice catch up time. I'm really looking forward to it. So we're gonna prepare the food on stream. We're at Italian night, so uh, we we're cooking for Bella Fire. We're making. Uh, Italian donuts, we're making a uh, pasta primavera and we're also making arancini and I'm also going to make some like nibbles so some like a cheese board and things like that and then everyone brings their own drinks. Uh, what's the public holiday for? It is... Hmm, I don't actually know. I exceed, exceed will know. Um, I'm not actually sure. Which is terrible. I've just moved it back to this state so I don't actually know Maybe it's the Queen's birthday? Ever had sausage balls? Hmm, I don't know. Queen's birthday, I thought, okay. Sausage balls, I don't know. Okay, so this is what we've made. And I'm gonna bring over one of these bread rolls. Well, I'll bring over all four of them. So basically, you just break them off like that. And they're super cheesy. Uh, we'll chase these ones, because these ones have got herbs in them. The ones we made last time didn't. Um, and if you didn't want to make it like this, that you can roll it out. Add more almond flour and roll it out and make crispy crackers. It's so tasty as well. So basically like this, like dinner rolls. And spongy. Mmm. Yum. I'm mm. gonna taste that bit of garlic. Uh, the Queen's birthday is actually uh, celebrated in, in different months all over the world. Mmm. So, in different states, in different states, it's ce celebrated in, in different months. Hey Google, what day is the Queen's birthday in Victoria? According to Wikipedia, Victoria Day is a federal Canadian public holiday celebrated on the last Monday preceding May 25th in honour of Queen Victoria's birthday. Hey Google, what is the Queen's birthday in Melbourne? Sorry, I don't understand. Mm. God, that looks good. Marry me, girl. Thank you. Mm, so every um, different places celebrate at different times. So this is the, look at that. It's really spongy and it's really cheesy. It's really tasty. And then that's why it's nice when you bake it like this because they bake up rather than outwards. Like this is spread a little bit further. Whereas these are a little bit more fluffy. Um, so they're your keto bread rolls. And I cut them in half. I made this last week. We cut them in half and we had burgers. And they were nice. They were a little bit too moist, but they're actually, like I cut them in half and then toast them and they're really flavorful. 
um, and I like the inclusion of the spices and herbs in there today. So these are your your raspberry, we're going to call them raspberry keto bombs. Um, I would freeze them and then drizzle some like cocoa um, mixed with coconut oil and then like a homemade raw chocolate on there or you can just eat them as it is like a, a frozen yogurt type or frozen cheesecake. And then here are your keto, oh so in here I should rem um, remind you what's in there. We've got frozen raspberries, coconut, some stevia, um, and what else? Some cream cheese. Is that it? Yeah, super easy. You can put some um, uh, coconut oil in there as well if you wanted to. Uh, and then here are your killer fried chicken. So we have chicken strips. So just strips of chicken breast, so you could use thigh as well. Um, that we have dipped in mixed egg. Egg, um, like an egg, egg mixture, just like a whisked egg. And then we've dipped it in uh, a mixture of ground almonds, some chia seeds, some coconut, um, and then also some spices as well. Uh, so we used, what else, what did we use? Some chili. So we used ground chili and then chili flakes as well. And then we've dipped it in this sauce. So this is an idea from Aussie Rose, which is, uh, she uses Greek yogurt but we use Greek yogurt and cream, uh, sour cream to give it some creaminess, as well as the zestiness from the Greek yogurt. And then I have this harissa paste, uh, harissa powder. So this is um, a mixture of Middle Eastern spices. So in there you've got cumin, paprika, um, garlic, onion, and then most importantly is the mint in there. The mint is delicious. So it really adds some freshness, uh, and a great dipping sauce. If I did it again, I'd probably add some lemon juice um, and we added some salt and it's a beautiful uh, zesty dipping sauce for here. If you don't, you know, you could eat it by itself or you can add just Greek yogurt, uh, whatever you like, but I think it's a nice flavor addition. So yeah. What is this? Um, it's October 1 in Queensland, 11th of June in Victoria, 24th of September in Perth. Yeah, everywhere's different. It's because it's in line with um, each state has different public holidays, so they need to slot it in to different um, months so that you spread it around the year. So um, they're the same day in Western Australia is a public holiday in Victoria, but one is Labor Day and then one is something else in like so they have two public holidays, but they're called different things, so that each state needs, it's just, it's just politicians, I think. I don't know. They're just different reasons why they're on different dates. We celebrated our Prime Minister's birthday. We will be doing it several times a year at this rate, yes. Yeah, we're, we just got a new Prime Minister, guys, so um, there's been a little bit of contention and jokes about um, the, the changing of, um, Prime Minister, so every time you change a Prime Minister, you need to um, change your uh, service your car. Um, there's all these jokes out there because I think in the last three years, we've had like five Prime Ministers. They're just, yeah, it's a, they're making a little bit of a mockery of the polit politic system. All right, guys, next time on. So tomorrow in one, oh, we'll be in the kitchen back here in one day in 14 hours and 34 minutes um, and then we'll be doing Italian cook for preparation for games night for my family so we're making Bella Fire's Italian food um, then but before that we have uh, evenings with exceed which is at 4 30 so it's gonna be in 13 hours we're gonna be playing two point hospital we're gonna be playing overcooked it's gonna be a lot of fun. And then we have keto brownies and some delicious food for Sunday slow down. A very relaxed, chilled out stream. All right guys, it is the end of the stream. Thank you everyone for being here. We're gonna jump over and we are gonna host the big G. Uh, so he was one of our uh, friends when we were on a crash fam. He is a very talented streamer. He's just starting back up again after taking hiatus. So we'd love if you can jump over there and say hello. The follow button is free. Just give him support, guys. And thank you everyone for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.